Now, amid the rising number of cases and the refusal of some persons who test positive for COVID-19 to go into isolation centers, many states have said they will continue to treat the infected patients at isolation centers rather than resort to home treatment option. They noted that getting persons who had tested positive for the virus to the isolation centers remained one of their strategies to contain the spread of the deadly virus. Lagos State had on Thursday said it was considering adopting home treatment option for patients uh, with mild symptoms, noting that it would, it would soon release the guidelines for the treatment option. The State Commissioner for Health, Professor Akin Bayomi, said the decision to consider home treatment for some COVID-19 patients became necessary because some residents who tested positive for the COVID-19 refused to go to the state isolation centers and had been practicing self-treatment in various places. Joining us live is Professor Emmanuel Oduari, who is the Chief Resident Family Medicine from the Department uh, UBTH, Benin City, Edo State. And also joining us is PRO, Nigerian Infectious Disease uh, Society from, L, uh, from Luth here in Nigeria. Good afternoon, you both. Yes, um, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. Um, all right, so... so very quickly, the numbers keep rising and the battle against the virus continues. Um, what noteworthy policies are being pursued on a state level? Um, okay. Uh, okay. Professor Emmanuel, that's that, uh, for you, if you well, can hear me. Yeah. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Hello? Please go ahead. Hello? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, please go ahead, Emmanuel. Okay, okay, yeah, so... Uh, Do you need well, me to what, take what the questions again? Okay, I take the questions again. The numbers keep rising. Yeah. And the battle against the virus continues. What noteworthy policies are being pursued on a state level, in your opinion? Yeah, I, I mean, well, yeah, one of the policies that the Lagos State has uh, tried to do, like you said earlier, is uh, looking at transitioning to home care um, so that um, some of these individuals can self isolate at home and uh, we reduce the burden on the hospital so that the real sick people are able to come into the hospital so that the um, resources of the state. And uh, the strength of the healthcare workers is not uh, totally exhausted. And also, um, the state is also inviting a lot of private organizations to come in into this uh, fight. And uh, they are trying to see how they can, the, the, the private uh, sector can contribute in terms of um, skill, technology, and stuff. Like so uh, there's actually a lot that, like, uh, let's say, for example, is trying to do the fight against the virus. And, uh, uh, we, we just hope that very soon we can end up this. All right, from what you see and observe, how well are we managing containment on a state level? Well, I mean, we're, we're no longer at a level of containment uh, because containment now is, 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 is like the, the virus. We, we're now at the level we call mitigation in our public health epidemiology, meaning that uh, what we're trying to do basically now is to try to find a way to slow, that, to slow the spread of the virus. The virus is not contained anymore. We have uh, what we call sustained community transmission. Uh, we can no longer really track it on a case by case basis. Now, because a lot of people are coming up, we don't even know where they got it from, you know, uh, because you could have a systematic transmission as all. Well. So, where we are now is we are, we are trying to slow the spread, mm -hmm. slow the spread of the virus, test people, trace the people that have been tested, and try and treat them. We we'll call it test, trace, and uh, treat. And uh, Lagos State is, is very much, many, many more tests than that, that most other states in Nigeria. That's why we have it. All right. In, t in trying to slow down the, the spread, like you put it, we also hear talk of home treatment amid news of crowded isolation centers. Is this a measure that can be effectively pursued? I'm oh, sorry, I, I didn't get that. Thing. All right, I said that in talking about slowing down the spread, we also hear of the conversation around home treatment amidst the news of crowded isolation centers. Is this a measure that can be effectively pursued?
other countries. Uh, the US are the first to do that. All the European countries, the US, all of them did home care. And uh, like I said earlier, the whole idea of home care is to relieve. Professor, are you still there? Reduce the body. Like, the home care is to reduce the body on the healthcare system. So it's the very sick people that actually come into the hospitals. And uh, this, this home care is not going to be for everybody. Uh, for example, at some certain ages, you will not be allowed. You may not be allowed to stay at home because you could. Uh, those are people that could easily uh, uh, flip and become very severe. People with comorbidities will not want to. Only faster. Only faster. If you live in one house with, um, with 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 quite a lot of people living in a face and face apartment, it may not be possible to stay at home. So there are very clear guidelines. It's not everybody that will view this stay at home. But those that can stay at home, they'll be encouraged too, so that it reduces the burden on the healthcare facilities. Now, uh, doctor, do you see any time soon that we have come to a place where we can say, well, we are doing our best and can really move forward in terms of people returning to their normal life? Yeah, well, I mean, we don't have a choice but to look forward, really. Uh, we, don't, we don't have a choice. We can't, we can't give up. We can't lose hope. So, and uh, well, when, when you talk about normal life, we don't know whether we really return to that normal that we used to know before now. Uh, so, we, we can't really give a timeline to this virus. We're looking at something that will be around for a while, and uh, we just have to learn to live with it, cook our fear of the virus, and, and move on, actually. Uh, but when we move on, we also have to adapt and evolve to the changes that the virus has caused. So, those are real things that we all have to do with it. Uh, every facet and every sector of life and the economy, and we just have to find a way to move on with the virus. All right. Thank you, Professor. Uh, we have Oduare on the line now. Yes, if you can hear me, sir. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, I can hear you very well, loud and clear. All right. Thank you for joining us. Uh, so we're having the conversation around COVID-19 and the numbers still going on and what we need to do where we are. In your, I mean, in your opinion, what more can be done? What other options should we explore during this time? All right. So um, from an epidemiological perspective, the principles of containment, uh, identification, via testing, um, where you identify, you isolate, you treat, and they contact trace. So um, those components are critical to containing the contagion. Now that's what the NCDC at the federal level and the different state governments at the local level have employed, albeit late. Now the point is when you have a contagion, it's really highly infectious contagion like the coronavirus, what you need to do ab initio is mass testing. Now, because of the cost in, um, involved and then the scarcity of kits globally, that could not be achieved. And that's why the next phase was in lockdown in order to limit the spread and then understand the pandemic better. Now, that's what has been done in Nigeria, and the PTF over time has um, relaxed lockdown to some point and extended it to some other places. Now, that is appropriate. Now, Pari Pursue, mass testing is going on in some states, that community-based testing, as opposed to testing only in hospitals for sick or symptomatic people, which was the original strategy. Now, so what we need to do is to continue in this trajectory to encourage more states to be like Lagos and Edo state, as modern states like Ogun and FCTE and even Kajina and Kano, we are doing community testing, which is the reason why you are having more results. Because when you go for evangelism, you expect to win souls. Mm -hmm. So that's the point. Because we're having more community testing, we are going to pick more persons. So it creates a disguised picture that there is a spike in number of cases. No, we are actually discovering persons who are positive, possibly who have been positive for up to one week or two weeks or 10 days prior to our testing. Which is why when you get to the isolation system, they several convert that they turn negative fairly quickly because they've been positive for quite a while. So the earlier we identify them, isolate them, treat them, and contact with those they've been contact with, the earlier we can come out of the, this phase of the contagion. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about this uh, development of a national testing kit. You know, this effectively right. means that greater testing. Now, how do you see this impacting on our success in combating the virus on a state level? 
um, actually there are procedural formalities that have to be employed before a test kit is validated for mass use. Now, the challenges, because the data on this condition is evolving, what we're still doing is the molecular testing. Now, what Paris pursued, there are some other kits that are being used concomitantly in order to standardize them. The earlier we can get to even a rapid test, like we did for HIV, the better. But the fact is that so that you do not have too many false negatives or even false positives, um, the, there's some slowdown in jumping to that next phase. But that is the next critical phase, yeah. a rapid test kit that is nationally standardized and universally available. Thank you so very much, Professor Emmanuel, for your time. Dr. Emmanuel, glory to you. The news continues. Thank you very much for having me.